Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona, the 116500LN with ceramic bezel and stainless steel case. You can see and you can purchase this timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona 116500LN. Now, the watch on my wrist was part of a pair that debuted at Basel World 2016, the latest of the in house caliber Daytonas. White dial and black bezel, or black dial and black bezel, that was your choice. The model on my wrist can be considered the best seller of the two, though both are indefinitely weightlisted. This has certainly been the one that's garnered the most attention from collectors of the type. Now, the watch has a classical 40 millimeter automatic winding Daytona fit, which is to say that if you've worn any Daytona since 1988, chances are you're going to like the fit of this one because it wears like those. The watch is 40 millimeters across the round of the case. On my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, you can see it's a perfect fit. That's not including crown guards, chronograph pushers, or crown. And just to note, I've screwed out the pushers to demonstrate the operation. They normally don't protrude by that margin. In terms of thickness, the watch is 12.2 millimeters thick. With a generously sloped sapphire and conical bezel, it will slip underneath any cuff. Now, this is a watch that I believe can be worn with style on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. And the lug to lug dimension is a large reason for that. 46.6 millimeters from lug to lug. If you measure from solid end link to solid end link, you get 50.5 millimeters across the wrist. But because this is not a super case, Rolex because the lugs aren't excessively squared off and broad. The watch would still appear appropriate on a strap. Even if you were to throw it on something like a NATO or an aftermarket shell cordovan, the lines of the case are so classical and tapered and would be proportional to a strap in a way that a super case Rolex would not. So I'm going to remind you that the lug spacing, for those of you who dare, is 20 millimeters. Now you know what to place an order for online should you plan to save your bracelet or simply swap out for a strap to go a little bit more 70s racer. The watch is hefty on the wrist, not because it's massive. Physically it isn't, but in terms of heft, you're getting a lot of metal when you buy a modern Rolex, even one that's not based on the super case. Now you could see my misfortune. My hand has seen better days and therefore I elegantly shroud it in a glove for today. Uh, you can see the watch features all solid center links and solid end links. Now, this imparts extra mass, also a feeling of solidity on the wrist. You'll note the contrasting finish breaks up the amount of metal and polished on the flanks, satin on the shoulders, polished down the center, does offer a handsome aesthetic for an all steel watch. You'll also note the clasp is nicely made, the Daytona being one of the flagship Rolex products. The clasp is finished within and without. It also features Rolex's Easy Link. You can see the hollow of the Easy Link. It's the equivalent of adding or removing one full sizable link from the bracelet. Take in, take out, all without the need of a tool nor the intervention of a jeweler. Moving back to the case, Again, this is where the watch has probably changed the least since 1988 when we first saw the chronometer certified automatic with the screw downs. That was the Zenith generation. This is the in-house caliber, but the lines have been timeless. Rolex got it right out of the box. Elegant, handsome, perfectly proportioned. The watch wears its high polished case with a sensuous beauty, giving way to the dramatic black ceramic of the Cerachrom bezel. Now, here's the thing. Although Cerachrom can be cracked, and no, it's true, the old steel bezels could not be. The problem with those older bezels was often that though the bezel would endure for decades, the lacquer within the individual calibrations, showing you the numbers, the indices, that would wear over time. So what we have here is a solution that will never scratch or scuff in usual day-to-day -day use, and let's face it, if you're not one to chip or shatter sapphire crystals, you're probably not going to damage ceramic either. So it's preferable to steel on that basis. It's also dramatic, imposing, and contrasts beautiful with the 
platinum inlay. Yes, that's right. This is actually platinum deposit to create the characters of the tachymeter scale. Now, inboard, the contrast with the white dial is superb, which might be why this variant has been the more popular of the two that debuted in 2016. You can see the dial is finished to a high standard. It's a white gloss base with black contrasting registers that are ever so slightly countersunk below the plane of the dial base. Outboard, you can see calibrations as well as applied and polished and fully luminescent white gold indices. There's a white gold five-point Rolex coronet at 12 o'clock. The hands at center are both loomed and, yes, white gold. Why all of this white gold? Well, it's Rolex's way of ensuring the watch against a future of tarnish or corrosion should humidity ever penetrate the interior of the case. Now, what's inside? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's Rolex's in-house caliber 4130, originally introduced in 2000. It's been upgraded over the years, most recently in about 2007 with the Paracrom Blue anti-magnetic alloy for the hairspring. It's a Breguet overcoil hairspring, which means that the Paracrom alloy is anti-magnetic and the Breguet overcoil structure makes the watch resistant to positionally induced or gravitationally induced timing deviation. What else does it have? Well, it's got a 72 hour or three day power reserve, automatic winding, thanks to the screw down crown and pushers. It has 100 meter water resistance. I always like to say this is a watch for timing your car trackside at Daytona or jumping into the surf for spring break at Daytona Beach. Moreover, if you pull the crown, it does stop the seconds, chronograph and constant seconds, so you can synchronize precisely, perhaps to a race timer. I'm not to say. Full balance bridge with a free sprung architecture makes the watch very shock resistant. Ultimately, the watch also features both a column wheel for selecting functions, it's what you hear and what you feel when actuating the chronograph, and a vertical clutch, which allows the watch to always reset precisely to the index at 12. The seconds hand will start without jump and stop without stagger thanks to the vertical clutch. And if you prefer to leave chronograph running full time so you can have center seconds, with a vertical clutch there is no additional wear and tear on the mechanism. You can see this handsome, contemporary, and very much in demand ceramic bezel steel Rolex Daytona and purchase it on our website.